What's up guys, this is Ray, welcome to Asian Films, and today we'll be talking about the 2018 Japanese tokusatsu superhero movie, Kamen Rider Heisei Generations Forever. Heisei Generations Forever is going to be the last, the absolute most final Heisei Kamen Rider movie to come out, well because next uh, this year the Heisei era is officially ending. And this is a movie episode of Kamen Rider Gio, and it's directed by Yamaguchi Kyohei. And this movie stars Okunoso and Inukai Atsuhiro who play Kamen Rider Geo and Kamen Rider Build respectively. A little warning for if you guys don't follow Kamen Rider Geo or Kamen Rider Build, you will be lost uh, in the description of this video. I apologize for that, but this is definitely for the fans who keep up with the Kamen Rider movies or Kamen Rider series, I should say. And it's about the story. It's about this super time jacker by the name of Tido, and he goes back in time to try to er to try to erase Kamen Riders from history. To aid in his efforts, he dispatches two minions, another double and another deno, and he tries to uh, to capture this singularity point by the name of Shingo. The term singularity point is a plot device from Kamen Rider Deno. So definitely if you haven't seen Kamen Rider Deno, uh, you, you can have a better appreciation of a lot of stuff that happens in this movie. And the reason why he's trying to why Tito's trying to capture Shingo is that capturing Shingo will enable him to carry out the, the stuff that he wants to do. And so Kamen Rider Geo and Kamen Rider Bill spring into action and along the way they meet this boy named Ataru who for some reason knows the entire history of Kamen Rider and can spew it out like any of us fanboys can. And of course as these stories go there's a lot more to Ataru than meets the eye. So as far as some positives are concerned you know I like the fights. I genuinely like the fights in uh, most Kamen Rider movies. I thought the fights here although they're not the best uh, in recent years, I think they're still enjoyable. I genuinely like the designs of all the bad guys in this in uh, in Kamen Rider Geo because they remind me of SIC figures and you know just really horrendous, beastly versions of existing Kamen Riders. And I like the design of the bad guys in this movie. I also like seeing the returning cast of Kamen Rider Build. Pretty much all the good guys from Kamen Rider Build make a return uh, to this story. And you know, granted, I I. I wish they had larger roles to play, more screen time on top of that, but it was still nice seeing their faces. And with the positive, that's pretty much it. I think I have a lot more negatives to say about uh, this movie, and I think the biggest thing I have is the story. I mean, it's not that it was a bad story in writing, I think it was just too ambitious in the sense that it overcomplicated itself, it went too far and tried to become uh, and try to try to make a unique story that it ended up very, being very convoluted, full of a ton of plot holes. And it's not necessarily because of the time travel that's featured in this movie. You know that part's actually okay. And the reason why it works out okay, why time travel doesn't seem out of place in the story, because it can, it connects to the main uh, guest Kamen Rider, if you will, that they're trying to promote in the story. More on that in a little bit. And a little bit of a spoiler, although it's not really because it's in the trailers, but one of the characters comes uh, crosses over into this world from the real world. Basically the, a world where Kamen Rider is a TV show. So uh, the Kamen Riders, they cross back over into that world and it just creates all this, this just, just weird mess of a story. And I think the first loophole starts when you see how the character starts to cross over into the Kamen Rider world in the first place. I mean, it just didn't make sense. Another thing is that this movie uh, features the problem which seems to be predominant in all these movie war movies in the sense that uh, when they show all these riders, you know, they, they, sh they show all the suits, uh, but they don't really show much of their powers. They do generic fighter choreography uh, when they come out, but they do like maybe one or two moves no form changes you know it's like when you want to see all these riders you want to you want to remember all the stuff that they can do but this movie it just shows them in the suit they fight they kill off a few bad guys with their their finishing attack and that's pretty much it you don't really you know you might hear a sound clip of the original actor saying their catchphrase but they don't do much to really do justice to uh, where these characters come from and their stories. And some of the ways they try to interpret uh, some of these writer's skills, like, I mean, they had Kamen Rider Ghost, who, you know, only in the movies, it seems, he, like, floats around like a ghost. But you can definitely tell in this movie, they had him floating around in a hoverboard. It was, you can obviously tell with the way it was moving around. It was, it's, it was kind of funny, and it took me out of the story for a little bit. And the last negative I have to say is that there weren't as many cameos from veteran writer actors as one would hope in this kind of movie. Uh, you know, I mean, with the name, with the, for the final Heisei Kamen Rider movie, 
I don't know, you expect for them to pull up, pull, pull out a lot of stops. I mean, they did have one big cameo. I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys have read that Kamen, the original actor of Kamen Rider Deno, Sato Takeru, makes a cameo in this movie, but he is the only veteran writer uh, actor to appear in this movie, save for the cast of Kamen Rider Built. And that's not including the actor who plays the owner of the Denliner and also the voice actors of the Imagine who accompany Kamen Rider Deno. And something that I thought that was quite odd is that the Urataro suit doesn't make an appearance in this cameo. I, f I don't know, I, I figured uh, somewhere behind the scenes the Urotaro suit was just ruined or destroyed, maybe has some mold in it so they couldn't actually use it. So a lot of the time that Ryotaro was on screen, it was as Urotaro's inhabiting his body, not as actual Ryotaro. So I thought that was kind of odd. It would have been more interesting to see Ryotaro as Ryotaro. I mean, you get the whole Deno thing where they bounce around in and out of his body, you know, just for the for the lols and for the callback. But, you know, pretty much he kind of ends his cameo as Urataros. And I'm pretty sure because Sato Takeru is one of the most successful actors to come out of Kamen Rider, he was he probably he pretty much sucked up all the budget as far as who can they, who they could hire for cameos. So overall, what do I have to say about Kamen Rider Heisei Generations Forever? You know, ah, I, that, that's it. Ah, it's okay. I mean, it's not the most memorable Kamen Rider movie to ever come out, and let alone the most memorable movie war to come out. I mean, I think it was just. Ah, I mean, it had a lot of ambition. You know, they definitely pulled out all the big bucks uh, getting Sato Takeru to cameo in this movie. That's pretty much it. I feel like, you know, this movie had created a lot of problems with this overly ambitious story. And, and you, almost, you would think that it would create this kind of existential crisis uh, within the characters, you know, the actual Kamen Riders who crossed over into the real world. But they don't really go much that, in, that much into it, like, at the end of the story. I mean, as much as I enjoy the action in this movie, I mean, overall it was pretty generic and and not so not something memorable as what you can hope for in these types of movies. And also, I think Heisei Generation's final, which was last year's movie war, was tons better than this movie, you know? And it's not saying much. I thought Heisei Generation's final was also okay, but it still was more memorable than this movie could hope for. And it's kind of sad because they pretty much brought back all the Heisei Kamen Rider suits and with these really cool intros, but then after they brought them out, that's it. I mean, they didn't really do much uh, with their characters or with their powers, as I mentioned earlier. They just pretty much did generic action and, you know, that was, they didn't really do any of the form changes or, you know, only maybe one uh, one power. Or they even made up some powers that you don't ever see, that you never saw these writers use in their respective shows. And I kind of dislike when they do that. It's like, you know, when you see a returning writer come out in these movies, you want them to do the stuff that you remember them doing. Granted, you know, it's okay to arrange it in different ways, but don't make up shit, because that's what they did with a few of these writers. They do these powers that's like, you know, I don't remember him actually doing that, but yeah, he just did it. So I don't know, maybe it was an effort to, to, uh, to change it up a little bit, but you know, it just feels kind of weird when they, whenever you see that. Do I recommend watching this movie? Yeah. I mean, if you follow Geo, I guess might as well, but it's not world changing if you miss it. Yes, those are my thoughts on Kamen Rider Heisei Generations Forever. What did you guys think? Please let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. And if you really did my content, please know you can support AJ Films via Patreon from as little as $1. And that's a bit about it for me, guys. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you all again in the next video. Take it easy.